ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls! <coughs> Welcome to episode 114 or 13, or I don't know, of the Spirit Sunnies podcast. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it, since I've done one of these? Oh, man. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't want last week to be a guest episode because I know I just released a guest episode, but some shit happened, which I'm going to get into later in the podcast. But the main thing to remember here is I didn't miss a fucking episode, even though all this shit was happening, right? Now, I want to talk... I want to talk about the Avengers. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to spoil the fuck out of it, all right? Fair warning, it's been a while now, okay? And I'm with you. I hate cunts who spoil stuff. So I'm letting you know that I'm about to spoil the Avengers now. Alright? I hope those cunts are gone. Okay, I want to talk about the Avengers, okay? Dude, who fucking thought that a Marvel movie could be consistently good the whole way through? Man, when I looked at the poster... When I looked at the fucking poster of the Avengers, and it, that shit looked like a family reunion with 35 cousins that you know the face of, but you don't know the name. I looked at the poster and I was like, I felt the same way that, like when I, I felt the same thing that I feel when I have to go to one of these fucking family reunions, which was, ah, all these cunts are going to talk to me like I know them, and expect me to know who they are, and care about them, but I just don't, I just know their faces, I don't know who you are, I don't give a fuck, dude, I'm white, alright, we don't do family, (laughs) man, do you know, do you know what, I was thinking, I think I'm writing a bit about this, about how fucking different white family is to like, any other, any other race, any other race gives a fuck about their cousin, I don't know who my cousin is, who's my, dude, I, I have cousins that I just found out about a year ago, I'm 24, I've lived 23 years on planet earth, not knowing that I had like six extra cousins that I had just never met, and they're not Like, second cousins or first cousins. Cousins. Like, real fucking my uncle's children cousins. And I didn't know, I'd never met them. And I, and you know what? Meeting them didn't improve my life at all. Whereas, if you're like Italian or Greek or Arab or Vietnamese or any, any other race other than white, if someone sneezed near your cousin, you would go to their house and beat the fuck out of them. For dis- How dare you disrespect my cousin? Like, here's something that you'll never see, man. That has never happened to me, right? I hang out. You're hanging out with a white friend, right? You've never heard your white friend go, Hey, man, this is my cousin. I thought I'd bring him along. <laughs> Because we don't, we don't do that. We don't hang out with each other, man. White families is, a white family is mum, dad, brother, sister. That's it. Maybe, maybe one grandparent. It's never two. You see one. And you have four, but you only really give a fuck about one. Whereas you hang out with, you go to your Arab friend's house and he's like, hey man, This is my mum, this is my uncle, this is my grandpa, these are my six cousins, these are my second cousins, this guy, I'm pretty sure we're related to us because of this marriage and that marriage, and they're all my best mates. Come in and enjoy this wonderful food. You rock up to a white guy's house, and he's like, hey man, mum, shut up! Shut the fuck up, mum! Shut up! I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk to my friends! Anyway, man, come into my house. Do you want to, you want some wheat picks? Like, that's... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's it. Why am I talking about families? <coughs> oh yeah, the Avengers. I don't whatever. Right. So there's so many fucking characters in the Avengers. 
And I don't know how they managed to do a two and a half hour movie with like 30 cunts in it. I didn't feel lost at all, man. At all. And I hadn't seen Doctor Strange. Because I saw that Benedict Cumberbatch's fucking head. And I was like, you know what? I just don't want to look at it for two hours. I'm sorry. I don't want to look at that iguana looking dude in a cape for two hours. Even if he's making weird fucking white people gang signs. And then special effects magic come out of it. No, I'm sorry. I can't look at two hours of a, a, a pug getting strangled. I don't like his head. And that might be a petty reason to not enjoy a movie. And to those people who think that, I say, I agree. But I'm going to enjoy what I'm going to enjoy. And I'm not going to enjoy looking at that cunt's head. Sue me. Alright? So I was like, not seeing Doctor Strange. I saw Black Panther. I like that movie. Uh, I see. That's the thing. I don't think I've. I don't think I've only seen like maybe two thirds of the fucking Marvel movies. So whatever. I understood the movie, and that was amazing. Bro, Thanos was such a cool villain, to the point where I was like, "Yeah, I agree with you, man." And you know how he got the infi the, all the fucking Infinity Gauntlet or the stones or whatever. And then he just killed half the planet. And then he sat down and he was like, Man, I sacrificed my own daughter so that I could kill everyone else in the world. You know what I thought? Oi, oi, dumb cunt, bring her back. <laughs> bring her back, fuckhead. And then kill, kill a deer. That's another thing that I didn't get, right? If Thanos killed 50% of all life, did he also kill, like, half of the pandas because those cunts are endangered and if he did that's rude as fuck man because his whole thing was there are too many people and aliens and living beings in the universe overpopulation is going to destroy the world so if this dude's really out here halving the population of bengal tigers all that means is those Bengal tigers are gonna have to fuck their cousins like, <laughs> like, like an Arab family reunion, and then they're all gonna come out retarded. Is that what you want, Thanos? You want retarded tigers? Cause that's how you get it. Snap them back. No one wants retarded tigers. Except for those clickbait sites. They made a lot of money out of that one fucking retarded tiger with Down Syndrome. You always see that picture? This tiger has Down Syndrome. I bet it's dead. You reckon it's dead by now? I'm gonna Google it. Tiger Down Syndrome. I don't know why I want to know this. It's not going to improve my day. Kenny the White Tiger reveals the price of inbreeding. See, what, look what you've done, Thanos. This tiger looks like a pug. <laughs> it fucking does, man. Oh, man. Where are we? What's his name? Kenny the White Tiger. Kenny White Tiger. Death. Is this cunt dead? Yeah, it, it's dead. I knew that. Well, now I'm sad. Why would I do that? Now, oh, look at him drooling. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. But you know what, though? All of you fucking dogs who tried to spoil the Avengers for me suck my dick because it didn't affect my enjoyment at all. You know what I'm going to do thanks to you fucking dogs? And don't, don't do this more just because I've figured out an inconvenient solution. I still genuinely hate this shit. Fuck every cunt that spoils movies, alright? But because Thanos killed half of the population of planet Earth, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense that Spider-Man dies. Fuck Black Panther. Cool, Doctor Strange is gone. Whatever. That's fine. That wasn't a surprise. I knew as soon as he snapped his fingers, oh, half the cunts are going to be dead, and in, in, in the next ten movies, they're going to have to say, pretty please, can you bring them back? You know that's how it's going to end. You know that's how Avengers 4 is going to finish. 
or three or whatever fucking Avengers we're up to, right? Is they can't beat Thanos because he has the power of fucking God. So they're literally just going to say, oh, come on, man. Come on, just, just click your fingers again, bro. Come on, dude. That's it. That's all they're going to do. They're just going to ask him nicely. And then he's going to be like, oh, yeah, fair enough. I do miss that green bitch. And then he'll bring everyone back. And that'll be Avengers 3. You know what I reckon? I reckon they killed half of those cunts just to save money on the next movie. Because <laughs> now they can be like, Oh, fuck. Dude, the budget for that movie was a billion dollars. And you know most of that was just to pay for Robert Downey Jr.'s nuts to get licked in between takes because he owns them. He's like, hey, man, I was the first Marvel movie, so if you want me back... I would like $600 million this time. How much is he getting paid? Tony Stark. Whatever the fuck cunt's name is. I think I just said it. Robert Downey Jr. Whatever. Robert Down Syndrome Tiger. Salary for Avengers. Uh, where are we? $80 million a year. No. Where the fuck is... Robert Downey. Yeah, $80 million to do fucking... Wait, what? No, $200 million. $200 million. You know a million dollars? You know how a million dollars is a lot of money? Imagine 200 of those. Like $200 million. That's a lot of fucking money. This cunt's going to become the real Iron Man at this point. You know, I was, thinking the, I was thinking the other day, once you've bought, like, a nice house and a nice car, what are you actually doing with, like, with money? Because I, I, I pay myself $400 a week, and because I live with my parents, I don't pay rent. I buy all my own food, and I have, and I'm still saving money. Like, I don't know what the fuck I would be doing if I was making $10,000 a week, but I owned a house and I owned a car. I actually, I feel like it would actually be an effort to spend that every week. Like, you just wouldn't know. I know there's, there's only so many fucking clothes and shit you can buy before you're like, oh, man. It's more work spending it than save. I don't know. I don't understand what people who, who people who are that rich what they do with their money. And I, I feel like if I don't know if I ever fucking make it and I do end up making a shitload of money, I don't know what the fuck. I feel like you know what I would do if I had like just crazy disposable income. I would just start weird businesses. But then that just hopefully makes you even more money. And then what the fuck do you do with that? I, you know what? I want to do what Rick Ross has done. I just want to be like... Like, I've made it in comedy. So now I just buy fucking franchises. And then I, I talk about that. Like, Rick Ross... He has this line where he's like... I can't remember what the exact line is. But he says something along the lines of... Music money's good, but 40 franchises is better. And then he just talks about chicken shops for the rest of the song. And it's like, dude, 40 franchises. That's 40 separate businesses selling fucking chicken. Like, that's what I want. I want to be... I, you know, this is how I want to be, like, talked about. I want to be, hey, that Louis Spears guy. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I like his stuff. He's pretty funny. But then the the guy who knows me properly is like... He, 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 so he goes, hey, man, do you know Louis Spears? And then this other guy goes, yeah, man, he's pretty good, I guess. I don't, I, I don't know. I listen to other shit, but I like his stuff too. And, and then the, the dude goes, did you know, did you know that that guy, <laughs> did you know that he has 35 dominoes? <laughs> and then the other guy's like, what do you mean? Like, like dominoes, the, the playing, no, 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 35, 35 dominoes pizza franchises. What do you mean he has 35 
Domino's pizza franchises. Well, he took all the money that he made from radio. Wait, he's not making any money on radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when to- this is Lewis Spears in the future. If radio works out and he does, and, for- and somehow he makes it through to an actually good paying job without anyone discovering... He probably shouldn't have that job because of what he says on the internet. <laughs> and, then, and then he goes, yeah, man. So somehow he got on drive and uh, he made the big bucks. And he just, instead of spending, he bought a house and he bought a car. But then he just paid himself $500 a week. So he got an upgrade from Gene's money and he moved up to 500 bucks a week. And then he just spent the rest of the money on buying Domino's franchises. And now, like, when you order... From Domino's, there's like a 35% chance that it's coming from one of the Domino's that Lewis Spears owns. And then this other guy goes, oh, that's pretty crazy, man. And then they just stop talking about it. That's how I want to be remembered, man. I, that's what, that's the, I want to have that at my fucking funeral. Of like, Lewis Spears. Lewis Spears was a hardworking, very funny man. And many people know that he did great things in stand-up comedy and furthering the independent business of comedy. But what he was most proud of in life and least recognized for was his 27 Mad Mex franchises where he served 335,000 burritos in a span of 10 years. <laughs> and and three of them, and three of them, won best franchise of the year. Throughout. <laughs> That's all that I want. And he didn't really have anything to do with the stores. He didn't run them. He really just employed other people to run them. But he was there at the start with the capital. And for some reason, that makes him a good businessman. That's all I want, man. I want to be remembered not only as a pretty funny dude, but as the cunt who owned 35 Dominoes, 27 Mad Mexes, and I, I don't know, maybe I dabbled in Red Rooster, but it didn't really turn out, so I just had two, and then they were losing money, but I kind of kept them there because my accountant worked out that if I kept those running at a loss, I would actually end up paying less tax that year. That's all I want, man. Why am I talking... Ah, uh, this is going to be one of those episodes where I just go on fucking tangents and I get lost. What was I talking about before this? When I Die. Franchises. Rick Ross. Fuck. I, I don't know. I'm lost, guys. I don't know what I was talking about before that, but we're in this we're in this weird area now where I talked about Domino's and Mad Max for like seven minutes and now I'm lost. But the last thing I can remember is rap and I have something written in my podcast notes to talk about rap. Oh! That's right. Oh no, Avengers. Okay, we'll get to this rap shit later. Avengers, right? The Avengers movie was phenomenal. And I, and, but, but, okay, but, here's the thing. (laughs) I can't even say it. Dude, there was one scene. There was one scene that was not meant to be funny. It was not meant to be funny, but fuck, it was the funniest shit. I was in a packed theater with my girl, and she was punching me every time I laughed. I wonder if I can find it on YouTube. Probably can't. Um, Avengers. I probably can't, I bet. Where are we? Um, Peter Dinklage. Sorry, I can't talk and type. I'm fucking stupid. Um... Okay. Oh, we got a bootleg thing. Do we have a bootleg thing? Let me find out. Oh, we do. Okay. Okay. Let me find the bit that I was talking about. And then, uh... That I was watching. Alright, so. So, in the Avengers... (laughs) In the Avengers, they have to build some fucking weapon for Thor. Whatever. That doesn't matter. So they go to this... They need, to, they need to find the dwarves. So the dwarves make the fucking weapons, right? 
So they go to this planet, and the whole time, they're talking about dwarves. We need to go to these dwarves, and they're dwarves, and they make weapons because they're dwarves, and they've got to mine, and they've got to forge because they're dwarves, right? So this whole time, I'm thinking, fuck yeah, I'm going to see Thor talking to a little dwarf, and then they get to the planet. And I know this wasn't supposed to be funny, but I cannot stress this enough. I pissed myself in the theater of 300 people. I was the only person laughing, and I was howling, bro. I was fucking dying when Peter Dinklage, who's like that midget that plays Tyrion Lannister or whatever the fuck his name is. That's not his name. Whatever. He plays the midget in Game of Thrones, right? When Peter Dinklage comes on screen and the the thing is they're dwarves, but they're giant dwarves. So... I don't know how they did it, but they must have green screened it so they made Thor come up to about the midget's th- like knee so that it was a giant midget. And <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was fucking screaming in the theater. My girlfriend was so embarrassed every time that giant midget came on stage and I had to look at Thor smaller than a midget. I was crying, man. And I, 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 that, I, I'll buy the Blu-ray for that. I'll, like, thank you so much for doing that. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, dude. A giant midget in the Avengers. Let me find this scene. Is this it? <laughs> man, I'm just watching a bootleg version. It doesn't have audio. I can't get over it. How fucking hilarious that shit is. And I don't care. If you guys don't think that's funny, I do not care. Because to me, that's the funniest thing I've seen all year. And I don't think that I'll ever top it. Ever. There's no way I'll ever write a joke funnier than a giant midget talking to Thor. Oh, man. Oh, that's what I was talking about before. Spoilers. My theory to get away from spoilers. Well, my method... Uh, so all these fucking cunts, the day that it came out, messaged my page. Hey, man, Spider-Man dies. Cool. And this is what gets me, is I can't avoid those spoilers because I have to check my messages because... You know, sometimes like, hey, sometimes people are like, hey, how can I buy a ticket to a show? Or when are you coming to this thing? So I always check it so I can tell people what's going on. But the thing is, I can't avoid those spoilers. So I avoid Twitter. I don't look at Twitter. I don't look at whatever. But cunts just comment on all of my social media platforms and directly message my page. And I see it in the preview. Spider-Man dies in Avengers. Fuck you, man. I hate that shit. So now, any movie that I'm excited about, or the rest of the world is excited about, midnight screenings, and I'm just going to see it first. And then cunts are going to message me, and then I'm going to go straight back at them. Because normally, when I see a spoiler for a movie that I want to see, it just makes me sad. Like, oh fuck, I spent six months avoiding watching trailers just so this fuckhead can tell me that Spider-Man dies in the Avengers? And then I just get sad. I'm like, oh fuck. That movie's ruined for me now. What got ruined for me? I don't know, like fucking 36 movies you dogs keep ruining for me. So I'm just gonna midnight, I'm just gonna see midnight screenings now. Are you happy? Cunt. That being said though, it's pretty funny spoiling a movie for someone. (laughs) Dude, you know what the, man, this, I remember i got to find it. This is the funniest shit. I've already got it up. This is the funniest spoiler I've ever seen in my life. Do you remember when Har- when the Harry Potter books were coming out? And like, nerds who were into wizards would line up for that shit? And they would line up and wait in line so they could get the book the- on midnight when it comes out? The best video on YouTube. The best video on YouTube was posted 11 years ago. This is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Because, here's, here's the thing. It's one thing to ruin a movie, right? 
which is just a two hour experience. So whatever, that's some light stuff. You ruin a movie, fuck you. I'm probably going to see it anyway. And, you know, it's only two hours of my life that you've ruined. But if you ruin the ending, not even the ending of a book, right? The ending of a of the final book, of, of the seventh book in an entire series that people have been reading since they were 10 years old, that is some next level spoilering. That is like, that ruins a person's week. The entire time they read that book, over. Ruined, right? And this video, posted 11 years ago, is the funniest shit in the world. This guy, on the midnight release of Deathly Hallows, the book, so the final Harry Potter movie book, Har final Harry Potter movie book, final Harry Potter book, the final book, the midnight release, somehow he finds out what page every character dies on. There must be some speed reader or some leak. And he drives past, drives past the line on midnight, the day the book comes out. This is before Twitter, before Facebook, before spoiling was a thing. And he drives past with his mates in a car and a megaphone reading out what page each character dies on and people just scream at him i've got it up now it is the funniest shit it's just called in all caps harry potter spoiler three exclamation marks and that's the perfect title and this is what fucking happened <laughs> it's only like a 40 second video too here we go page 658 <laughs> 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 A megaphone. <laughs> and then it ends with you like Harry Potter and you wieners a little. And and you know what? That's what the internet's for. That's what the internet is for. Oh, shit. And he's got... And you know they planned it. They got all of their mates up like, Hey, we don't really know how to read. I don't like reading or anything. But I do have a megaphone and, a, and an obnoxious personality. Do you want to drive past the midnight release of the final Harry Potter book and scream through a megaphone who dies on what page? That's... Dude, I've done a lot of trolling. I've fucked with people. I'll never be on that level. Straight up. I'll never be that good. Because that will never be done again. Because no one cares as much about books or midnight releases of books because everyone's got a Kindle, everyone reads it online, everyone's got movies. That'll never happen again. That's a man That's a man at the top of an era. Amazing, man. What does someone talk about today? Uh, oh, yeah. Um... <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, fucking extra pussy for my assassin, right? You know, I was listening to this this a couple podcasts ago. I was listening to this Meg Mill song, or no, this Migos song, and and one of the dudes, Quavo, whatever the fuck his name is, he goes extra pussy for my assassin, and I was just like, dude, this guy's paying. Not only does he have an assassin, no, 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 it was extra pussy for my savage. That's right. Yeah, extra pussy for my savage. So, this dude has a fucking savage and he's paying him with pussy. Extra pussy. So, he's got pussy and he's given leftovers to the savage. And I talked about that and it really struck a chord with you guys because you kept posting extra pussy for my on everything. I want you to know that I found the song. I be, It would be racking my brains and then I just chucked on something else and then I found it. It's not a Migos song. It's a Meek Mill song that Quavo features on. And he doesn't say extra pussy for my savage. He says extra pussy for my assassin. Have a listen to this. I, I hope I can put this on YouTube. Whatever. Listen to this shit. Watch it. Come back, yay. Here. Dude. 
Dude, ex roll, excuse me? What? Extra pussy for my assassin? This changes so many things, man. Uh, first, we thought it was savage. It's not. This guy doesn't have any savages. He's got assassins. Assassins, dude. And he pays. He's got people that will kill other humans for him in exchange for extra pussy. Not even like premium puss. Like the pussy that Quavo's given for himself. He's like, hey man, this pussy here, this is for me. But you can have my leftover pussy if you go kill that cunt over there. Go kill him. And then I'll give you this pussy. I mean, I don't, I don't really want it, but you can have it. And people do that for him? That's some gangster shit, man. I don't really have anything to say in regards to that. I just wanted you to know that I found the song. It's called Ball Player by Meek Mill featuring Quavo. Extra pussy for my assassin. So yeah, I've nothing to say about that other than found the song. There you go. Everyone's been everyone's been harassing me about it. <clears throat> All right. Before we get into miscellaneous bit of the end, I've uh, I I've got I got a bit of dilemma, guys, that I uh, want to talk to you about. So you everyone is well aware of the warehouse dream that I have, right? The dream is to rent a warehouse. And then fit it out with film spaces, editing bays, merchandise rooms, podcast space, live streaming corner. Just make a, a, a giant in-house production studio centered around everything that I do. And then maybe I'll take on some other people's projects as well. I could run my touring out there just to build a warehouse and a business around what I do and what I'm doing. And uh, I thought that dream was a long way away. Because obviously, finding a warehouse, that's hard. Find, finding the money to pay for a lease is difficult. Finding the right people, that's hard. But, uh, I think I found, I think I found it. I think I've found the warehouse. Uh, there's a warehouse that's quite close to my place, my house. Uh, it is 50 meters squared, so it's small, but it's big enough for like three film spaces, editing bays, podcast place, just big enough for everything. It's just cheap enough, kind of. It's kind of expensive. I don't know if I can afford it, uh, but I think I've found the warehouse. Uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about doing this shit until next year. But this thing has just popped up in the perfect location. I can almost afford it. Not really. Uh, and it's the perfect size. I'm going in to inspect it on Tuesday. And uh, I, I, I think I found it. If, if the inspection goes well, it, 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 this could be it, guys. This could be the fucking warehouse thing that I've been talking about for years. Problem is, I can't afford it. <laughs> I've been doing the numbers. Um, I think I can, because the plan was to wait until after the tour. And, ev and even then, it would be a bit fucking risky opening up a lease and buying all that kind of shit. Um, but the problem is, I can't. Like, this place has popped up. It's perfect. It's in the perfect location, the perfect size. Kind of the right price that we were hoping for once I have the money six months down the, la down the line, which I don't have now. So, I'm, 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 we're looking at it. We're thinking, fuck, if we don't get it now, we might not get another one for a long time. Um, so, I mean, fuck, I, I, we could have found it, man. It, it means that... I'm going to have to take a massive pay cut. And you you guys know I'm not paying myself a lot of money. I'm, I'm only on jeans money, man. I'm only on $400 a week. I could buy a pair of jeans. I'd have to bump myself down to t-shirt money. At least down to t-shirt money, 300 bucks a week. Probably more. So, I don't know. I don't know if I can afford it. But we're going to have a look at it. 
And uh, if it's perfect, I might have to go back to eating fucking wheat bix for breakfast, lunch, and dinner just so I can do this thing. But I don't know what's going to happen with it. I think, I don't know, let's say it is perfect. And, and when we want to move into it, maybe I could do a big thing about my Patreon to help fucking pay for the thing. Because, you know, all the comedy special money, you know what I'm like? I threw it back into the hole, all right? I'm just being like, whatever. I got way over my budget. Back into the hole. I bought, I bought fucking, what did I buy? I bought like a couple of things for like camera gear and that kind of shit after the special. And then, yeah, all, what I bought was all of the fucking stuff that's in that other storage unit that I have. All the cameras and lights and tripods. I spent a bunch of money on gear. And then I was like, alright. Everything else that was over budget. Put it back into the fucking hole. <clears throat> um, so now. I'm thinking with this uh, warehouse. I don't know. Maybe if Patreon picks up a little bit more. I'll be able to afford it. Or maybe I'll just go for it. And then <laughs> cross my fingers. And hope Patreon will kick up. I don't, know, I don't really know. The point is. I think I found the warehouse. I don't know how I'm going to afford it. But if the warehouse is perfect, it might be fucking happening. And I'll just... You know what I'm like. I just fucking jump in and I'm like, ah, I'll figure out the money later. <laughs> That's what I've done with my past three previous tours. Oh no, I don't have enough money to put on the tour. Book it anyway. Hopefully the cunts will buy tickets and then I'll be able to pay for the deposits. Woohoo! See, I don't take physical risks. I take financial and personal risks. Where I'm like, hey man, I'm not going to get on the merry-go-round at a carnival because I'm scared of hurting myself. But what I will do is rest, risk a giant bankruptcy black check mark against my name and risk the opportunity of ever being approved for a home loan or a credit card or a personal loan or anything like that and ruin my personal ties as a performer with the venue by gambling on booking a show that I can't afford and crossing my fingers to hope that people buy enough tickets in and <laughs> before the show so I can pay the final deposit before we do it. And so far, it's worked out. So maybe I'm just going to do that with this. Where I'll be like, yes sir, I can afford to pay the lease and then go to you guys, help me, I agreed to something that I can't afford. <laughs> I promise it'll help me make more fucking content. But I don't know. I need to, I need to work it out. I'm not going to make any concrete decisions, but we found a really, really good space. Um, I'm going to go see it on Tuesday. I'm inspecting it on Tuesday, and, and uh, we're going to see what happens with it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and, and dude, if, seriously, man, if I have a fucking warehouse where I go every day to film and write and I have a dude there every day to film my shit and edit for me while I am there. Over. The fucking content will explode. I, I wrote down an output of, of co a realistic output that I think I could put out if I had a, had, a, had a permanent space to film and write. And a permanent guy to help me do it. And uh, my realistic content output. This is every week. Main channel video, which is either a Lou Review, Bio Monthly Bull, or co Cooking video. Uh, a video for Facebook as well. The whole podcast. Uh, podcast clips. Chopping up all of the podcasts into their... Sorry, cut out there. What I was listing, I reckon I could put out two to three main channel videos a week. Plus the podcast and all of this other shit and something for Facebook. <clears throat> if I had my own space. And I, I don't feel like I would compromise at all on quality because I would just have a full-time guy. But we'll see what happens. I'm I'm inspecting it on Tuesday. I'll keep you guys in the loop on what's happening with it. I might It might be the wrong thing for me. It might not be soundproof or they might not want me to film there or, or whatever. Anything could happen. But if it is perfect, we might be achieving the warehouse dream a lot sooner than we thought. And that'll be very fucking exciting for everything that we're doing <clears throat> and <clears throat> way more shit for you guys um speaking of extra content uh we've gotten the 
the radio show. Uh, we've been trying to working on this for a long time, but we've got somebody who will film every single radio show. Well, sorry, every Sunday. Every Sunday, we're having a guy. With, we've finally been given access to. The, there are cameras in the roof that they didn't want us to use. We finally got them to to give us access to the cameras that are in the roof of the radio studio. So for every Sunday, for now, right now, every single Sunday show on Fox, the radio show Luke and Lewis, will be filmed. The whole show. And we're going to put the whole show up uh, unedited. So minus the ad breaks and minus the songs. Just me and Luke talking. The entire show, which should be about 40 minutes, on YouTube. The whole thing. Every Sunday. Well... Every Sunday show. It probably won't be posted until maybe Monday or Tuesday, but every single show will be on the YouTube channel. <clears throat> like it's some Joe Rogan shit. And the, the cameras are amazing, man. So they can... We've got a guy and he will edit it live. So he will be able to switch the camera to Luke when Luke's talking, then back to me when I'm talking. And then there's no editing that needs to be done. It'll all be synced. So you'll have the audio that goes into the... The audio from the microphones is synced up to the cameras in the roof. So every single Luke and Lewis show will be filmed on like professional cameras with brilliant sound and will be posted in full to the YouTube channel uh, that we have starting from this week's show. Sorry, this week's show was filmed with just uh, regular DSLR cameras, our cameras. But I think on Monday, Todd, our video guy is getting trained up and then he'll be able to use the ones in the roof. But uh, this Sunday show, the whole thing was filmed and will be, will be put on the YouTube channel. So that's exciting. That's really, really cool. I think, um, we are definitely the only radio show in, in Australia ever to do that. And, uh, definitely one of the only ones worldwide. I think, I think the only radio shows that do do that, uh, put it behind a paywall or something, but we're just going to put it out for free for you guys to watch. And then you'll be able to watch the entire radio show you know, the video of us talking and doing all the dumb shit, you know, the a couple days after it comes out on radio, which is really, really cool. So that's the thing. And we'll also be posting like clips and, and shit like, like we used to when we started Luke and Lewis. That was when Luke and I were doing it ourselves. But you probably noticed that when we were putting out videos like twice a week on Luke and Lewis, that's, that's when mine and Luke's content really dropped off. And then we, then we had to make the decision, fuck, our individual stuff is more important than the radio show. So we need to focus on us. And then we just forgot about posting videos on Luke and Lewis until we could get a guy. And we've been asking them and asking them and asking them. We finally got a fucking guy. So uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more videos. Like just from this Sunday show, we've got three videos. So, I mean, hey, if we're doing four shows a week and we get two fucking videos out of every show... That's eight videos a week, one every single day and then twice one day for you guys to enjoy. So that's a big thing that'll be happening um, and I'm very happy for that because that's what we want and I think that'll make our radio show really fucking big, online anyway. But uh, yeah, really, really, really positive changes have been happening. I think I may have found the warehouse, uh, all of my content's going great. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, the comedy special, dude, it's getting closer. It's getting real close. We've started working on the trailer. Um, I've started building the website that will facilitate the downloads of it. Uh, for people to download it. Um, fuck, I actually don't know how I'm going to... I'm going to have to work out how I'm going to deliver all of the downloads that people got during the crowdfund. That's a thing that I really need to work out. I mean, it will be possible, but... Oh, no, I've already worked that out. I've worked that out. Um... Don't worry, if you pledge the crowdfund, you're fucking getting it. Um, yeah, so I've started talking to DVD people. We're, we're designing the DVD cover. Mateo has come up, has come through again. If you don't know, Mateo uh, draws all of my live posters. So we did Cyberly Superstar, Try and Stop Me. Uh, they tried to cancel me last time. And all of the merchandise. And he fucking killed the poster. Far and away, the best poster we've ever done. And that'll be also awesomely enough will be the dvd cover too so we're designing dvd covers and all that kind of shit uh i've just met up with antonio and we went through the comedy special picking the right angles for each joke i think we want to do that one more time just have another pass at it make sure we did really pick the right angles and if we did i mean fuck it's almost done so 
The comedy special is getting super, super close to being finished. I do not have a date for you. I'm sorry. I know we are behind schedule. Actually, we're not that behind. I did say April or May. It won't be May. It's not going to be this month. But, um, hey, it's definitely this year. So, it's coming out when it does. But I can promise you that... I don't know. I just feel like I've been working on this thing for four years... It can, be, it can be delayed a couple of months to get it perfect. That's what I think. It's the most important thing I've ever done in my life. And I will, I will hate myself if I, if, I fin, if I release like a 95% finished product. So that's coming out uh, soon. But I don't have a date for you. But soon. And it's looking really good. And you know what, man? Because I've, I wrote the material over like three years and I've been editing it for fucking six months, um, <clears throat> I've kind of forgotten what it's like to watch it for the first time because I've been performing it and watching it and editing it. I showed it to uh, a friend of mine who had, who had never, never really seen me perform, hasn't seen my material, and they were pissing themselves. And it was... It was one of the most beautiful things of, like, for for me, of like the most satisfying. Like, I I knew it. You know that moment where you're like, I fucking knew it. I knew it was good. Like it was that moment of, because I had never seen someone watch the comedy special that had not already seen me live. So Luke seen bits of it. You know, uh, my girl seen parts of it. Antonio seen the whole thing because he's a director. So. And Carl had seen some parts of it, but everyone who had seen some parts of it has seen me performing live for years, so they know the material already. They've seen it live. So I showed it to someone who's never really watched me live, and it was just this moment of, I fucking knew it was good. Like, I knew I could do it. It was like this this moment of, man, I fucking did it. I made a comedy special that's that's good. Um, and I know there's, there's fucking so many, oh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even going to get into it. So many fucking other jealous fucking comedians get mad when you tell people that you're good, but you know what? It's fucking good. And I spent four years on it and we filmed it in 4k and it's fucking good. And if that makes you mad, Hey, work on your own shit and then maybe you'll think your shit's good. Why would, I don't know, my philosophy, of course I'm going to tell you that I'm good, right? Why would you guys come to a show if I didn't tell you that it was good? You see, so many people market their shows as, oh, you know, I got a one-star review in this paper. It's like, cool, man. Is that a joke or is that you just getting a one-star review? <laughs> I don't know. Um... What are we talking about here? I suppose it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Is it? Is that all I want to talk about? Talk comedy special, warehouse, radio show being filmed, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, let's do uh, let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Um, just got one question here because it's quite a long one, uh, and I think it'll be a goodie. All right, this if you oh, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the part of the end of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by you. It's, uh, I, I would really have advocate self-harm over listening to this part of the podcast, but, you know, it, seeing as is the worst part, some people like disrespecting their bodies and their minds, so they fucking listen to it, all right? So, <clears throat> oh, also, Lunar Review will be out on Tuesday. It's all filmed in, like, 70% edit. All right. This email, podcast at lewspears.com, if you want to email me, this email, Tinder date thinks I'm the one. Love it. All right. Hey, Lou. Love everything you're currently doing. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm in a bit of a weird situation. I need advice on what to do with the girl. Um, my name is Max, and the girl's name is Brittany. All righty, Max. Anyway, so a bit of a backstory. About a week ago, I started chatting with this girl on Tinder. She was quite cute and really fun to talk to. After a couple of days of messaging over Snapchat, I decided to... Oh, so I sent in a couple of dick pics. I, uh... I decided to ask her out on a date to dinner. Oh, classy man. Send her a pic of your nutsack and then take her to Nando's. <laughs> um, so the day of the date rolls around and I go to pick up, pick her up from her house to do the right thing. Man, dude, you're treating this like it's fucking prom. 
When I get there, she says her grandma wants to meet me. Oh, and fucking so is she. Here we go. What are you guys getting married? This should have been the first red flag. Yeah. Y yeah, you know what? If you're like 22 and, s and before you go on a date with a girl, she wants you to meet her grandma, you know her grandma licked her pussy when she was like nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking red flag for sure. That's some crazy religious shit. Like, you walk in the house and the grandma's like, if you don't believe in God, you're going to hell and I'm going to murder you. Look after my daughter. Uh, where are we? This should have been the first red flag, but I've been on dates before where the parents have wanted to meet me and being a random guy from Tinder, I didn't mind this at all. That's fucking weird, man. See, you don't... Like, once you're part... This guy's not a kid. This guy's a fucking adult. If you're an adult and you have to meet the parents before you take them on a date, like, they're homeschooled and abused, for sure. Anyway, uh, so we go out... Anyway, so we go out for dinner and hang out for a little bit. It was a fun time. She's really nice to talk to and just to chill with. But I wasn't feeling anything special towards her. Uh... I wasn't feeling anything special towards her, just more than a friend. Uh, what? Just more... Than, nothing special, just more than a friend. What, so you want to fuck her? But you don't want to be in a relationship? What, I don't know what that means. I drop her home and decide I'll give it another chance because she seemed awkward and wanted to hang out without the first date jitters. Okay. So you didn't feel anything for her, but you're like, ah, maybe I can fuck her. Um... So the next night, I invite her over to watch a movie with me. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's like, hey, so the first date was a little bit awkward, but if you want to come over and suck my knob, you can. <laughs> so the next night, I invite her over to watch a movie with me. In my initial message, I only said it was a movie night. But once, I only said it was a movie night. But once I mentioned it was at my place, things started to go bad. She was completely fine with it but then starts saying her grandma doesn't like the idea and wants to talk to me on the phone. Oh, no! Wants to talk to me on the phone and ask for my number. I politely tell her I'm happy to give her my number, but I don't really want to speak to her grandma. Dude, you're killing it. You are ha you're, like, putting up boundaries. Normally when I get emails, it's like someone making the wrong decision again and again and again. But you're like, hey, you're being honest. You're like, hey, man. I didn't really like you personally, but I would like to have sexual intercourse with you once and then never talk to you again. No, I don't want to talk to your grandma. You can have my number if you want to call me and, or send me a picture of your fucking tits over FaceTime, but I don't want to talk to your grandma. She smells like cheese. I love that, man. At this point, I'm starting to realize this is not a relationship I want to get myself into. She's 19 and still has to get her grandma's permission. It's fucking weird. Yes, it is. So she ends up coming over anyway because I didn't I didn't know how to tell her I changed my mind. No, you no, you're lying because oh no, I don't really want to be in a relationship with this girl. How do I tell her? And then you've in the back of your mind were like, you were going, Yeah, don't tell her. Maybe tell her after you fuck her. <laughs> um But yeah, you seem to be doing the right thing, man. You know what you want and you're being honest about it. Uh, she was over for about an hour where I, over for about an hour where I tried to make things nice, but really couldn't get into it. I tell my friend to call me and give me a, an excuse to go out. So she has to leave. <laughs> my friend calls and the girls accepts it fine and leaves. What did you, what was the excuse that you, you're in your house? See, that's the thing. How do you? Oh, my friend Tom called me and uh, he really wants to see Avengers. Sorry, bye. <clears throat> I don't know how you did that, man. That's impressive. Um, later that night, I decided to do the nice thing and text her that I'm not interested. This is where things got weird. She starts asking me why, to which I explain I'm just not interested. She starts saying things like, I thought you enjoyed the date, which I tried to explain that I did. I just didn't feel like we clicked. She stopped replying eventually and then posted on her story, I don't know what to do anymore. So I decided to be nice and message her again. Nah, you fucked up, man. You, that's it. You can't, 
Dude, you can't break up with some. I mean, I know you didn't break up with her because it's like a first date, but you can't reject someone and then be surprised if they sound sad and then try and fix it. It's like, no, dude, you rejected them. Of course they're going to be sad. If I like someone and I want to see them more and then they go, sorry, I just don't like you, which is what you said. Sorry, I don't like you. No matter how nicely you said it and packaged it up and said, oh, we didn't click, you said, and she knows you said, yeah, so, uh, I didn't like you. Sorry. Bye. I, yeah, I didn't like you, and I never want to see you again. That's what you said. So you can't try and fix it if that makes her sad, because, of course, that's going to make her sad. Uh, where are we? Uh, I don't know what to do anymore, so I decide to be nice and message her again. Bad mistake. Oh, you you know what to mean. Um, she starts getting upset about stupid things and starts asking questions like, did you just want sex? Which wasn't the case. Oh, wasn't it, man? So, <laughs> so it wasn't the case. So when you had the first date and you realized that you didn't like her as a person and then you invited her over to your house to watch a movie with no one else there, you weren't gonna fuck her, you evil cunt. Yes, you were! You were gonna fuck her! If she let you fuck her, you 100% would be six inches deep in her pussy, depending on how big your dick is. It could be four inches. I don't know you that personally. <laughs> you, uh, oh, no, I didn't, you, yes it was. Don't come to me and tell me that you invited a girl over to your house by herself to watch a movie and hold hands. You wanted to fuck her. She wasn't up up for it. And that's great that you didn't because that's if you did, you're Harvey Weinstein. <clears throat> um, did you just want sex, which wasn't the case? Lie detected was the case. Then she says the craziest shit ever. I really thought you were going to be the one. Whoa! After the first date? At this point, I'm thinking, what the fucking shit? I say I'm sorry, and she blocks me, thank God. Holy shit, I thought you were the one? Dude, how good are you at picking movies to watch? Dude, how do you how do you have dinner and watch half of Shrek 2 and be like, that's the one? <laughs> Dude. I don't know that that blows my mind, man. You watched an hour of a movie with her, and then got and then kicked her out of your fucking house, and she's like, "Ah, he's the one." See, that's what happens when your grandma licks your pussy when you were nine. You end up falling in love with the guy who only watches half of Shrek Two with you. Uh, I say I'm sorry, and she blocks me. Thank God. Anyway, unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. She unblocks me the next day and starts messaging me. I'm at work, so I don't reply for a bit. And when I did, I explained I was at work. And she says, okay, no worries. Then when I don't reply immediately, she asks, don't you want to talk to me? Which I then explain, hey, bitch, I'm still at work. She messages me when I finish work and I start question and started questioning if I was there all day. I work 6 a.m. to 4.30, so I definitely was. So this chick's treating you like she's your wife. It's like, dude. I, we watched we watched we watched 30 minutes of Shrek 2 and then I kicked you out of my house because I don't like your personality fuck off anyway things got weirder that night and she starts asking are we friends to which I say why not dude you know what you're doing you've you've latched onto a crazy bitch and you are, you're trying to get a root man you need to get away from it never put your dick in crazy all right I don't care what she looks like stop it you're gonna end up with a knife wound and and a grandma smothering you with one of her crocheted fucking pillows because they organized it when you the next time she sees you. Why not? Say no. We're not friends. I'm sorry if you thought that we were, but we were just dating and it didn't work out. And then you fucking unfollow her on everything and get that crazy bitch out of your life. To which I say, why not? She keeps messaging, li messaging me little things since then and I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Stop trying to fuck her and get out of her brain. I don't really want to be friends because she's crazy, but I don't know how to tell her this without her losing her shit or coming to my house, which is why I don't want to block her. Anyway, Lou, I'm stuck as what to do, so any advice would be appreciated. Thank you, and have a shit one. Max. Max. Here's the thing, Max. Fucking but Just... Dude. 
you don't need to block her on Snapchat. Just unfollow her. Don't and fi- private your account. Well, d- d- stop talking to this bitch. She's gonna kill you. You just stop. That's what you do, man. Just, dude. Have you ever seen the movie Casper, the ghost? Do that. Ghost her. Turn into a ghost. Disappear. Go away. Melt through a wall. Unfollow her on unmatch her on Tinder. Unfollow her on Snapchat. Set your account to private. Delete her from Facebook. You don't owe her anything. You gave her more than what you should owe any stranger. You gave her a first date and you gave her 45 minutes of Shrek 2 right before human Shrek turns back into regular Shrek and then you kicked her out of your house. That's it. That's all you need, man. You, you got it. You got right up to fucking human Shrek. That's all. You don't owe her shit. She is a stranger who is insane. Who thinks you're the one. You don't owe her anything. She's not going to fucking kill herself. She'll just have hurt feelings. Boo hoo. Fall in love with some other cunt. She's on Tinder, man. She's obviously insane. Stop talking. Excommunicate her. Pretend you're the Catholic Church in the medieval times and she's a non-believer. Excommunicado! Get the fuck out of my village! You're messing with the villagers! And then that's it! If she gets eaten by wolves, fucking that's her problem! She should have been nice to you! She should have she should have sucked your dick when Shrek started turning back into a human. <laughs> yeah, dude, you don't you don't owe her anything. Seriously, that's my answer. Block her, unfollow her, you don't owe her anything. She's a stranger. And obviously wants something that you don't want so stop keeping her around on the off chance she might come around and let you fuck her because she probably will and you know what the moment you put the tip of your knob in her that's it you're married in her mind and she and and you're and you're dead you're fucked so don't put your dick in crazy get out of that shit leave her alone let her hang out with her grandma and they can reminisce over you know, fond memories they have of her when she was nine. You know what happened. Leave it. Alright? That's my answer. Um, so guys, that's, that, look, that, that's gonna be the end of the podcast. Unless you wanna hear some depressing stuff about why I missed the, the episode. So, if you want it, leave it there on a nice little happy note. That's fine. Or, I'm letting you know, I'm gonna talk about why I missed the podcast and it's not going to be a happy chat. So, the reason why... So, see you later, everyone! Bye! That's the... I'll talk to you next Sunday. That's the end. Alright? Now, time for a bit of a fucking whinge. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the reason why I didn't do a podcast and I missed a video and I've, I also... You know, I've missed two videos is um, I had to put my dog down. Um, we did it. It's been about a a week and and a bit since we put him down. We put him down, uh, when was it? Last, last Wednesday, I think. I don't know. It's like a week and a bit ago. Uh, it's my, my, my Whippet Gideon, the, the brown skinny one who was in like, he's in a few Lou reviews that, that dog. I've had him since I was 10. Um, and uh, he just he just got too old, man. He got um, there was nothing there was nothing wrong with him. He didn't have any illness. He he just he was old, and his body just hurt. You could you know you can tell, like his his quality of life wasn't there anymore. Uh, and it got to the point where uh, he couldn't stand up, and uh, without help. Which we were, we were then thinking like, fuck, if you can't get up without a help, maybe it's time. But every now and then he would get up. But then, I know in the last two days, he just went downhill really quick. And uh, he couldn't stand up. He wouldn't eat food. He couldn't even drink water without throwing it up. Uh, he spent a whole day just vomiting shit up. And we thought he was sick. But then the next day he had the same thing. And, and we just made the call. We were just like, you know what? He's not... He's not okay. He's not, we just we accepted it. We're like he's not okay. He's not. He's getting worse. 
and he's not enjoying life anymore and it's 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 time we we were just like we knew it was going to happen and we just made the call um so we put him down and the reason why i'm talking about this and i'm not i'm just telling you i'm not just telling you what i'm why i missed the video i want to I, I i really want to say this and i think it's really important is is for, for anyone who has a dog or a, or, an, or any kind of animal I think this was we did this for him and I think it's really important that you do it as well which is we were there when they put him down we took him to the vet and we stayed in the room um, and I know a lot of people they don't want to be there because it's sad it's awful and it's sh and it's shocking but it's not f it's it's I, I think it's really selfish to leave to leave them with the vet because I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what happened because I didn't know what happened I didn't know what the process was all I knew was I, I remember reading a couple years back about this one vet saying you need to stay with your dog because I put down dogs all the time they get left by their owners and they freak out and they hate it and and but when they're there with their owners it's the complete opposite thing so that's why I'm telling you this I want to tell you what happened because I think it's really important that you do this for your animals for their sake and I don't regret doing it so what and, and if you want to turn it off it's kind of sad but whatever um, <clears throat> so what happened was we took him to the vet and uh, the vet knew him and we took him to a nice vet because there was one vet that he that he <laughs> that he always hated and he would start crying the, at the moment we would roll up he would just start crying I don't know why he just hated that one vet but we took him to this other vet that was just inside a house and it was really great and he didn't mind that one so we took him in and uh, the vet was great he explained what would happen um, <clears throat> and uh, what happened was the vet took him out of the room to put the, the needle in his leg which would enable him to to you know put put what puts him down in later so he has to put like a, a needle or a tube in his leg that he can then inject a thing into to, to, to let him go so he took him out of the room and then he took him back in um, and that was the only time he looked Gideon the dog looked distressed was when you saw the vet bring him back into the room and his face was like holy fuck where are they are they still here and the moment he saw us again he just relaxed he was like oh good they're still here and I'm still with them and that was the only time he looked distressed so what happened was I sat him on my lap and it was me and my brother and uh, the vet was just like say when and uh, so we said goodbye and we had it was beautiful we had the whole day with him beforehand everyone was there for the whole day just with him and then everyone was there at the vet <coughs> sorry I'm still not over it um, and so we said goodbye and uh, then we just told the vet you know go for it and the vet um, injected him with the with the stuff it didn't hurt him nothing happened I think what it was was a numbing agent and then uh, something that would you know essentially overdose on whatever makes you go to sleep when you go into surgery they do that to him and uh, so what happened was he obviously felt it go in and he felt his body going numb because he you know he perked up and he was like oh what's this that I'm feeling and uh, then he just went, uh, <laughs> then he just went, uh, he made a little growl and, uh, and then he was gone. Um, sorry. And then he was gone. Um, it was like, he, I don't know, he made this noise of like, it, I don't know, to me, it felt like, oh fuck, where am I going? <laughs> um. And that, and that was it. And Oh, fuck. Sorry, guys. I didn't want to do this. I guess I'm not over it. Um, and then when it happened, it was the craziest thing, man. Like, my whole... My arms and my lips went numb. Like, it was a shock. And it, I don't know. It's like it felt like he went through me. Like, I felt him leave and go through me. Like, his soul or whatever the fuck. I don't know what it, what it, what it was. Or maybe it was just me being shocked by the whole thing. But... I don't know. It felt like he he left his body and went through me and fucking went wherever you go. Is what it felt like. And um 
And it, it, that's that was like ten seconds. That whole thing was like ten seconds. That was it, and he was gone. And it was and it was it was sad because obviously it was sad, but it was it was like beautiful in a way as well, you know. Because because that we were there with him and we got to be with him at the end and um. Oh and and. And I felt like it was it was our responsibility to do that for him because he doesn't understand what's going on, obviously. And uh, and and I, I would I would hate for him at that moment to be distressed. Like the last moment that he would ever have on earth is where the fuck is my family? Why am I in this strange place? Who is this guy? And why do I feel weird? I would hate for that to be the thing. So as as you know, as sad as it was being there, I th- I think it was, you know, really important to do for him. <laughs> and I'm sorry that this is a really sad ending to the podcast, but I really just wanted to tell people that that's what happens when you go in to put your dog down or your cat down or whatever. It's not, it's sad, but it's not, it's not awful. And I think it's, I think it's really important that you can do that for your dogs or your animals or whatever and if you're not and if they're not anywhere close to being put down take them for a walk <laughs> um so yeah um that's what happened and that's why I haven't put out a video because I've just been I don't know we cancelled shows I was just sad man <laughs> like this Sunday's show on radio was great but I think last Sunday's wasn't very good because I just lost my dog and, and Luke also lost his grandfather. So it was just, it was like fucking sad cunt Sundays on Fox FM <laughs> pretending not to be sad. But I'm alright. I just miss my dog. Because I had him since I was like 10. And, and, and now I don't. <sighs> but that's, that's what happens. And it's as stupid as it is to say, it's like weird how permanent it is. You know? how permanent I know it's stupid to say how permanent death is but it's 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 weird man it's like that's the only you know even if you have a, a, a shocking fight with a friend there's always that possibility of making up um or if you lose something you can replace it or find it again or whatever there's, there's but there's nothing like that man there's nothing like death but you know it's sad but it was it was beautiful and it was and it was lovely and at the same time so I'm all right um, I'm back, I'm, I'll be back to videos now, I'm only, I'm only crying now because I'm talking about it, but I really wanted to say that to you guys because I think it's so important to do for your animals, so, um, and you know, my dad wasn't there, he couldn't, he reckoned he couldn't handle it, and that's fine, you don't all have to be there, just someone be, just be there with your fucking dog when they die, alright, they've been around for you, for your whole life, cheering you up when you were a sad cunt. The least you can do is be there when they die, so that it can be on your lap and you can feel them go, and uh, and and they're calm and and it's and it's nice for them. So that that's why I haven't done a video for a bit, and that's why I've been a little bit weird. All right. Thank you for listening to the Spin Sunday podcast. I'm sorry to end this on such a sad note. I want you to know that I'm not I'm not depressed or anything. I'm just I'm just a regular amount of sad because I miss my dog. So, but I'm back to videos now. I got some shit coming out for you. I hope that didn't bum you out too much. Oh, I can't believe I'm crying at fucking midnight at the radio station. I work too much. I don't have to do this shit. <laughs> I could be I could be asleep by now. But instead, I'm fucking crying at midnight in a radio studio doing a podcast that doesn't even make me money. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, so, yes. Thank you for listening to the Spears Sundays uh, podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. If you want to see me live, lucespears.com slash gig list and you put your email into that and you'll get a message when I'm on the way to your city. My tour is being organized now and uh, the show's coming along really, really good. Um, <clears throat> the, show's, the show this year is going to be fucking phenomenal. I mean, really, 
if you think about it, I've had a year to write each show. This year, I've had 18 months because we, we moved it from the start of the year to the end of the year because that's what I want to tour from now. So, show's coming along good. I'm really good. Um, <clears throat> despite what it might seem like at the end of this podcast, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I just miss my dog. So, take your dog for a walk and be there when it's time for them to go. I'm Lewis Spears. <laughs> I'm going to go have a sook. <laughs> I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one.